everyone and welcome to The Wellbeing Break, a new webinar series on mental well-being. My name is Dennis Persichini and I'm the undergrad well-being champion of the School of Psychology and Clinical Language Sciences of the University of Reading and I'm super happy to be the host of this webinar series. So with these episodes we really hope you to give some insights on ideas on new things that you can actually try to improve your daily mental well-being. So today we're going to talk about the role of goals and well-being and we're going to do this with Dr. Julia Vogt, researcher lecturer here at the University of Reading. Dr. Vogt, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Julia Vogt. I'm an associate professor of psychology at the University of Reading and I study goal pursuit and emotions. Great. So to start with, my first question for today will be, from a mental health perspective, what is the best advice that you could give to students to face this peculiar situation? Oh, there's so much that comes to mind. <laughs> I think, in a way, I think you just have to accept it. I think that's maybe one thing from an, so like from from the emotion research that I'm familiar with is just accept it and and try to focus on positive things or try to find um, maybe just laugh about it about this pandemic. I mean, hopefully now it comes to an end, but. Um, yeah, I think that is that's maybe the the most important advice to accept it and not kind of go into a total frustration. Or with some people, you also see like a lot of anger. You know, they're very upset about the lockdown rules and everything. And I think that is not very useful. So I think the people that cope best kind of accept it, maybe see it, try to see it in a positive way. Um, and if it's just making fun of it, and and try to find other ways to go about your goals. So. As you know, I'm very interested in goal pursuit and the pandemic is difficult because it blocks a lot of our goals. Like if one of your goals is to travel a lot or to see a lot of people, then it, the pandemic was probably a problem uh, uh, for you because you couldn't pursue these goals. And what, what research shows is in that situation, it is difficult. It will probably make you frustrated, but you have to accept it. And then you have to try to find other ways to go over these goals. So maybe you can call friends via Zoom call. I mean, we, we all might be a little bit tired of Zoom calls by now, but it's probably still better than nothing. It's probably still better than just sitting at home and being angry and frustrated, if that makes sense. That's that's actually so interesting. So my, my question would be like, in terms of goal, what's what's the best advice? Is it like change completely your goal or just wait till you, your goal will be possible, if, if, if that makes sense? That's a really good question. I think it, it might be difficult. I mean, some goals you probably have um, to postpone. Like if, you, if your goal is to go on a, on a big travel around the world, okay, that's a goal that you have to postpone. I mean, you might be able to do via Google Maps some uh, some visits, some virtual visits to country, but that's probably not what you're wanting. Uh, want to. For many other goals, I think you have to try to be a bit flexible. Like when you talk about social goals, let's say your goal is to connect with friends or family. Um, we would recommend that you try to find other ways to connect with them. If I mean, for, for, for some people, it might now be possible to visit at least um, certain people. But if it's not possible, I would still try to stay in touch with them, um, even if you are tired of Zoom talk uh, calls. Um, it is, I think it's still better than nothing. And also, sometimes there are other ways to go about it. I A few weeks ago, I listened to a researcher who said, for instance, if you miss somebody, let's say you are very far away from your parents and you can't visit them. So I have, for instance, at the moment, the situation, my parents are in Germany and I can't go there. What she recommended is eat some food that reminds you of these people. And she says, it's not, of course, it's not like meeting your parents or it's not like meeting your friends, but it still come, gives you this warm feeling and it gives you this feeling of connection to them. And I thought that's actually kind of nice advice. Of course, it's it's not a replacement, but it's at least better than just sitting there and be, being frustrated that you can't book a flight. Thank you. That was so interesting. Thank you for sharing that. That would be very helpful, especially for, for international students. So today, so today we're talking about well-being, mental well-being. So what's your idea of well-being? Yeah, I think that's a great question. So what I always find important when you talk about well-being is, is 
that well being is not about being happy all the time. So in my lab, we're doing some research on, on, on the pursuit of happiness. And what we find is that when people want to be happy all the time and to an extreme degree, they're actually quite unhappy. So for me, mental well being is not about being cheery and happy and excited all the time. But I think it's it's probably kind of balance between uh, feeling good or at least feeling okay or feeling appropriate. And I think it's important to, to experience negative emotions. I think negative emotions are just part of our life. And they also can tell us a lot. You know, when you're sad or angry about something, you can learn a lot what's, what's wrong or what you need in that situation. But I think there's a problem when these negative emotions become overwhelming and they stop you from, from um, doing the things you want to do and from achieving the things you want to do. So from my perspective, I think that's for me a mental well-being, that there's kind of a balance of emotions and it's, it, it doesn't become overwhelming and you, uh, or do, you feel just hopeless and, and anxious about, about the world. That was very interesting. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. An interesting perspective, I would say. So, yeah, what would you like to, to talk about today from your research? What, what can you tell us about well-being and, and goals? I think it's, I'm a goal, what I mentioned before, I'm a goal researcher and I also study emotions. And I find the, the link between the two very interesting because in research, sometimes it's considered as a little bit separate. So some people study motivation and goal pursuit and some people study emotion. But from my perspective, goals are probably one of the biggest sources of our emotions. So when you achieve a goal, like you achieve a good mark, um, you find the love of your life, whatever it is, most of us probably feel very, very positive emotion. But at the same time, when our goals are blocked or we don't achieve them, we fail in, in a test or an exam or in a relationship falls apart, that's probably the situations where we feel the strongest negative emotions. So I think it's sometimes really important to understand how goals have these fundamental effects. And also you can learn a little bit from it, how maybe you can influence it and where you need to take care. So for instance, one thing is, um, if you if you fail with a goal, let's say you want to exercise more, but you all the time you make these plans for going for runs or whatever it is, and um, you always don't achieve it, then and you feel very frustrated with yourself. You feel like kind of oh I don't why can't I do it? It might then simply be that you have put um, or selected the too ambitious goal. Um, so for instance, like if and we see that often when people um, lost uh, or gained a little bit of weight it might have happened to some people over the pandemic and then you feel like and now i'm going to exercise really hard and and um very much and then you put it you select a too ambitious goal like you, you decide to go running every day or and for a very long time you put yourself up for failure and that is then where the fr frustration sets in so that's one example i mean i also often see it with my students when students come to me when they were um frustrated about their marks that they come to me and say julia from now on i will um, study very very hard several hours each day and the entire weekend and then sometimes i say that's an unrealistic goal you won't study the entire weekend and by by setting such a goal you kind of set your set up for fa for failure and the problem is that that you then become frustrated with yourself and then you probably disengage um i, d I don't know if that makes sense from your perspective but <laughs> absolutely absolutely that was very very interesting so my question would be like with, with this pandemic that we are facing with faith, what, what, what's, what's the consequence? Like, are we having less goals? Are we not having goals? What's, what's, what's the research behind it? I could imagine, I mean, I, I would need to look up numbers. I don't know whether anybody has yeah, done that's really study. interesting. Yeah. But I could imagine that some people simply have given up a little bit and that it's kind of seemed to them, what's the point, for instance, what's, what's the point of going for, for the run? Nobody sees me anyways. On, people only see my face on a computer screen, you know? Like, um, so I could imagine that there is a bit maybe of the, it's almost a little bit like a dep depression. Um, 
But on the other hand, when you when you hear the data about how people are working, because I think there was a lot of doubt whether the home working will work out because companies normally like to have a little bit of control in their employees. And there you see that apparently most companies find that the employees have been working much harder. So um, or at least at the same level. So people haven't been giving up on their on their work-related goals, I think. Um, might have even become a bit more motivated because I could imagine that some people were scared of losing their job or, or similar, you know, so that's, um, I think that could also play a role. So I'm not sure, it's, I think it's an interesting question. I could imagine that some people have, have given up a little bit, um, especially, certain social goals, you know, you probably, I mean, if, if you, if your social life was really important for you, but it was important in a way that you wanted to go out, meet new people, maybe you gave up a little bit on these goals, you know, because they were so impossible for a long while. Yeah, yeah. I think like earlier, you gave us some some interesting advice, like being realistic with, with our goals, like don't exaggerate and just be be realistic. And also be flexible. I think what the pandemic is a good lesson about is you often have to be very, very flexible of your goals. And that's not always easy because sometimes we are not in a mindset where we can be flexible. You know, we, are, we might be exhausted and then it just costs more energy to be flexible. But actually, I think in our modern world, it is often required, you know, like I think in most of our jobs, we need to learn new skills throughout our lifetime. It's not anymore like for, for my grandparents, for instance, they could do the job like they learned it. I think we all, all, all the time have to learn new tools and to skill, new skills. And I think the same you had here with Go Pursuit, you know, you had to find other ways to go about your goals. Um, and it is challenging, but I think in the end, it probably for the people who, who accepted it, it paid off, like for the people who started gardening or whatever, you know, it's um, um, so try to make, basically trying to make the best out of the situation. Um, but I, but I, I appreciate that sometimes that what I, what I just said, I think sometimes you don't have to, the energy, so it can be quite difficult. Let's say you lose your job or you kind of um, some of the students might have moved back with their parents and that's really hard because you're not used to it anymore. And so like if everything is kind of difficult, then it can be very difficult to be flexible. And then I would sometimes just say, well, um, be passionate with, you, with yourself and just accept that, that it's a very difficult situation and maybe try to do the, yourself something good, you know, like, um, so don't, don't try to push yourself more when you're already at your boundaries. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for, for sharing that. So I, I found this goal uh, topic really interesting and, and really it's quite helpful because actually we it's quite important, especially in this moment. Is there something else that you would like to share from, from your research or just generally about goals? Yeah, another thing that I find personally very useful is um, when we think about goals, we, we have a lot of goals. So you have social goals. Um, you want maybe to meet somebody or, or keep your relationship in a, in a good state, or you want to meet you, make new friends. And then we have often work or achievement related goals, like um, getting a good degree or getting a good job. And with all kinds of other goals, like health related goals, maybe goals about becoming more creative. So most people, the assumption is, is about have about 15 to I think 25 goals in each moment. So that's a lot. It's it's a source also of, of a lot of stress because if you try to, to do too many things at once, you add stress. Um, so sometimes we fail with goals, not because they are too ambitious, but because we try to do too many things at once. But these many goals are also a big source of strength. So in my lab at the moment, what we find is that when we, when we stress participants out, so we are a bit nasty to them, we remind them of things in their life that are stressful. But then we, might, we remind them of, of other important goals in their lives. Like, ima like imagine you're really, really stressed out by an exam, but then um, we remind you that you may be a good son or daughter, that you may be a good friend to somebody, or that you are really uh, helpful to other people. We find that people can cope much better with this stressor. So kind of these different goals are also an, an incredible source of energy and strength. And a lot of models of, of happiness and well-being also argue that you basically need to have different 
um, basically different fields in your life that give you strength. So you should not just focus on work or maybe just focus on family, but you should basically have different things in your life that give you energy and that give you strength. Because if then one of them starts to get difficult, you can a little bit rely on the other ones to, um, to give you positive feelings and energy. And, and which, which of these is most important for you? That, of course, depends a little bit on your personality and on your values. So for some people, work will be more, most important. And for other people, let's say family will be most important. So that is that's, is what everybody needs to figure out for themselves. But I think you can see these many goals. They can be a source of stress, but they can also really be a source of, of strength. So just think about getting an, an essay back with a bad mark, and then you think about something positive, something different. And then I think this mark doesn't feel so like, oh, the, the world is, is um, going under, you know? That's that's very interesting. Something that we must remember to have this 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 balance. So yeah, thank you, thank you. So yeah, so my last question for today will be: any final words of advice for for students? Honestly, I find in I mean, it sounded like uh, maybe a little bit that I put. You need to be flexible. You need to be accepted. Um, I think what what I learned also for myself. I think this this time requires also to be quite compassionate with yourself you know it's a, it's a it's a difficult time it's it's weird to be told that you can't leave your house and that you can't see your friends it's a, it's very extreme i think it's a extreme um, limitation of our freedom and of our rights so i think if it feels overwhelming and also i think it's for lots of of the students that i have contact with it it is very lonely and it's i think it's very worrying so if that is what you're feeling be compassionate with yourself and i think see that this is a very very normal reaction and if it's if your emotional reaction is very extreme i would really encourage students to reach out for help if it's not that extreme i think sometimes it's just being nice to yourself you know like if if you really feel down and the solution is to watch six hours of your favorite series on netflix that's fine you know sometimes that's that's the right thing to do if if you, you really don't have any energy anymore. So. so I think it's, again, what we had in the beginning. I think there being is a lot of um, balance. So sometimes pushing yourself to do the right stuff, but sometimes also just kind of being compassionate with yourself and taking care of yourself in a very simple way, like having a good meal and, and a nice series or so. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you thank you so much for the precious advice thank you for your time today so thank you to dr julia Vogt, associate professor here at the university of reading so this concludes this episode of the well-being break this webinar series on mental well-being so thank you so much for listening and as always, I remind you to have a look at the essential page of the University of Reading, where you can uh, find all the services available uh, here at the university. I will also invite you to have a look at the Russo page, the website or on Facebook, as well as the Live Tools program, who offers a series of webinars every week on different topics of mental health, well-being, or even study advice. So thank you so much, and I will see you to the next episode of the Wellbeing Break. Thank you.